I have made up my mind to buy the fancy automobile from you. Sincerely, Tiffany, someone like myself, doesn't require such ostentation. However, my parents have been considering purchasing a new vehicle, and this one could be the perfect match for them. I've seen a shift in Peter ever since we were married. He's become a more conceited person, even lusting after the fancy automobile my parents gave me. Honestly, I'm tired of it. Tiffany is my name. I'm 28 years old, and I went to college with Peter. It has been three years since our marriage. This Peter, on the other hand, is the social butterfly, loved by everybody, the complete reverse of me. I have few close pals and am more of an introvert. Our relationship took a surprising turn when it began. We grew close over common classes and study sessions at first. I wasn't expecting him to show interest in me, but I was so happy when he asked me out that I said yes without thinking twice. That marked the start of our partnership. Peter's charisma, his laid-back demeanor, and his commitment to his academics were what pulled me in. It never seemed like he would have trouble finding another partner if he so desired because he had an abundance of acquaintances. Many of them were trendy and gorgeous women. To be honest, I questioned him tremblingly once whether he really believed that I was the one for him. His response was perplexing. He inquired why I'd ever asked such a question, seeming shocked. I admitted that I was insecure a lot and that all I wanted to know was why he picked me. He paused to think for a bit before stating flatly that he felt at ease with me. I had hoped for a more sincere reaction, but before I could say anything more, he seemed aloof and preoccupied with his phone. I apologized for bringing up the topic and dropped it so as not to create a fight, but the doubts persisted. Our relationship progressed well over time, at least on the surface. After graduating, we tied the knot and moved into a condo. While Peter maintained his doctoral studies and part-time work, I was fortunate to secure a steady position at a corporation. My mom was overjoyed to hear of our engagement, but she also acknowledged that she and my dad were starting to worry about when I would really introduce a partner. I was a little sorry I hadn't told them about Peter sooner, but my mother was just glad I had someone in my life who was interested in me. She knew how independent I was. My parents have served as my lifelong role models. Like Peter and myself, they met in college and have remained deeply in love and respect for one another ever since. While my mom followed her passion for cooking and eventually became a culinary instructor, my dad worked his way up the corporate ladder. They have always encouraged one another's aspirations and appreciated one another's independence. I want to form a union much like theirs. Even though I came from a wealthy household, I've always cherished being independent. I didn't go to graduate school like Peter because of this. My goal was to become independent and establish my own life. My basic desire has always been to one day have a healthy marriage, children, and a household similar to the one I grew up in. It might seem simple, but for someone like me, it's a big objective. Things began to change when Peter and I moved in together. Peter did not make much of a financial contribution, even though he was still a graduate student and worked part-time. He dismissed my suggestion that he allocate a larger portion of his salary to our costs, adding, you know, I do contribute. When we moved in together, didn't you say you would take care of the living expenses? His remarks unnerved me, Tiffany. Peter was very focused on his graduate studies since he had always dreamt of becoming a professor. But even though he pursued his goals, I felt like I was responsible for the majority of the debt. Given my steady employment, I had promised Peter he need not worry about money. So when he lashed back at me, I was at a loss for words and could only murmur a feeble assent. Peter gave a voice to a deep sigh. Tiffany, you wouldn't comprehend. The cost of attending graduate school is high. 
After a little pause, he said, besides, socializing is part of it too. Oh, and I need $11,000 for a research trip, he said, almost as an afterthought. Please lend it to me. I'll reimburse you afterwards. These kinds of requests increased in frequency, which put greater stress on our relationship. He began to disappear for longer periods of time, leaving me alone with cold, unfinished meals and missed phone calls. Upon his eventual return, which was frequently cheerful, I discovered that I had unexpectedly become forgiving. He'd suggest, hey, Tiffany, remember you wanted to go somewhere. I have tomorrow off, let's go. Or he would compliment my cooking, making me feel momentarily appreciated. Every time Peter showed kindness, I caught glimpses of the happy marriage I longed for. It made me hesitate to confront the deeper issues, even though deep down I knew something was wrong. I felt increasingly lonely and anxious, trapped in a cycle of brief moments of joy followed by prolonged periods of solitude. I found myself unable to share these struggles with anyone, especially my parents, who were genuinely thrilled about our marriage. Even so, they must have sensed that something was off. I hadn't visited them in a while, and when I finally did, my dad suggested I stay for dinner. My mom prepared an elaborate meal to welcome me, and during the meal, my dad mentioned that Aunt Lori had recently visited. She wanted to see me, he said, describing her as spontaneous, ambitious, and fiercely independent, the same traits that had always defined her. I'll reach out to her soon. Thanks, Dad, I replied, appreciating their subtle way of encouraging me to reconnect with family. Has my dad reminisced about how much Lori cared for me? He smiled, recalling how she playfully teased that Peter had stolen me away, even though she had never intended to marry herself. Before I met Peter, Lori had been more of a confidant than an aunt. I could talk to her about things I couldn't discuss with my parents. She understood me on a deeper level and had always been there to support me, especially in the beginning. I had always been too timid to discuss my relationship with Peter, especially with Lori, but now I felt eager to reconnect. A few days after visiting my parents, I met Lori at a cafe. She was as stylish as ever. As she looked over my outfit, she offered gentle advice. You know, Tiffany, marriage is just the beginning of a lifelong journey for a woman. You should always feel confident and attractive, no matter what. Your clothes can make a big difference, so don't forget to take care of yourself. With a graceful smile, she took a sip of her tea realizing how much I had neglected my own interests. I apologized for not keeping in touch. Lori chuckled and said, That's typical of you, Tiffany. It's good to be honest and serious, but being too timid often comes from a lack of experience. Still, I was thrilled when I heard you found someone special. I thought, finally, Tiffany is taking a step forward. It had been ages since I spent time with someone on a day off, and the weather was perfect, making our outing even more refreshing. We settled on the terrace, basking in the warm sunlight. In that tranquil moment, I felt comfortable enough to share my concerns with Lori. At first, I had believed that even someone as reserved as I could make a relationship work with Peter, but lately, doubts had been creeping in. Lori listened attentively, nodding empathetically without interrupting. When I finished, she asked softly, I suppose you haven't mentioned any of this to your parents, have you? Tiffany, no, I admitted. I even hesitated to tell you today. I didn't want to reveal my vulnerabilities to anyone. I thought I should be able to handle this on my own to prove that I can be truly independent. If mom and dad found out, they probably want me to move back home right away. I want to try and handle this by myself as much as I can. Lori respected my decision, not pushing the matter further, but she gently assured me. If you ever need help, let me know. First, if my dear Tiffany asks, I'll be there for you. 
no matter where I am. A month later, my mom called me casually. When you have time, could you come over? It's nothing urgent. Since I had the next day off, I decided to visit my parents. As I pulled up to my parents' house, I noticed a new car parked in the driveway. Excitement bubbled up inside me. Dad, is this car new? Did you just get it? Can I take it for a spin? I joked, my enthusiasm evident as I admired the sleek vehicle. Don't worry about that, Dad said, smiling warmly. This car is for you, Tiffany. Use it however you like. It'll come in handy. Mom added softly, we saw this car in a TV commercial and remembered you said you liked it, so it's our gift to you. You've been having a tough time lately, and we wanted to cheer you up. If things get rough, just drive this and come home anytime. The SUV, from a renowned international brand, was a thoughtful gesture that filled me with a deep sense of support and freedom. Dad had even arranged a parking spot near my condo for the new SUV. Overwhelmed, I laughed in disbelief, struggling to comprehend the generosity of their gift. Later, as I drove downtown, I reached into my pocket, retrieved the car key, and pressed the button. The SUV's lights flashed brightly around me. It was then that I heard a familiar voice from behind. What's with the new car? Peter asked. I turned to see my husband, who hadn't been home for what felt like an eternity. His presence left me momentarily speechless. He looked at the car with a smug grin. I see a gift from your parents every time I face Peter. I struggled to find my voice, but I was tired of feeling diminished. Peter, don't you care anymore? Do you even care about me? I managed to ask, summoning my courage. Peter's response was a bombshell. Are you just realizing this now? Did you think I loved you all this time? It's ridiculous how hopeful you are. His mocking laughter echoed in my ears. Something inside me snapped. Then why did you marry me? I retorted, louder than usual. Peter's cold reply was shocking. Wow, you're going to be that blunt about it. So marrying me was just a means to an end for you, huh? And now you want the car too. It's wasted on you. I couldn't believe the harshness of his words. Peter remained unfazed by the pain he caused. With chilling indifference, he added, you know we're getting a divorce. Without me, you'll never find another man. Think about it. With those cruel words, Peter left without a second glance, leaving me feeling both angry and heartbroken. My head pounded with a headache as I sat in the driver's seat, trying to calm myself. Eventually, I reached out to Aunt Lori for advice. After a few days of reflecting on the situation, I agreed to the divorce and moved back in with my parents. They welcomed me with open arms, and for a while, life felt peaceful again. However, that peace was short-lived. One afternoon, Peter showed up at my parents' house, accompanied by his parents. They all settled into the living room, and Peter's father spoke in a stern tone. We're here to discuss our son's divorce, he began. As the conversation about the divorce unfolded, I took a firm stand. If you don't agree to the divorce, I warned Peter, I'll use Mike On's connections at the university to jeopardize your future. It wouldn't be hard to damage the career of a junior registrar if their daughter files a complaint. Peter, who genuinely cared for me, was taken aback by my approach. He felt my tactics were aggressive and intimidating, as if I was trying to force his hand. His father argued vehemently, we could easily contest the divorce. He said, Tiffany, beneath her simple appearance, is manipulative and greedy. Poor Peter, I heard she even paid him to stay away. She must have entertained other men. We should take this to family court and claim Peter was coerced into this divorce. But if Tiffany were to make a genuine apology, maybe things could be different. For instance, if she gave up the car she's been driving, 
it might help smooth things over. Peter and his parents listen silently, absorbing his father's protests. Just then, the doorbell rang, and my mom answered it. Aunt Lori walked in, appearing behind her. Sorry I'm late, Lori said, joining the discussion. How's it going? Peter's family, who had met Lori only once at my wedding, was taken aback. What are you doing here? Peter's mother objected. It's rude to barge in like this. We're in the middle of something. Lori remained unfazed. You've heard about Peter's divorce, haven't you? How would an outsider like you know about this? Peter's mother challenged. Lori continued, I was informed by my brother earlier. I couldn't miss such an important moment for my dear niece. Peter's mother retorted, You're probably here to stop the divorce or for money. Are you still going to make accusations after seeing this? Without missing a beat, Lori pulled out a stack of documents from her bag and laid them out on the table for everyone to see. I hired a private detective to look into this, she revealed. It turns out Peter has been cheating on Tiffany with multiple women. He hardly came home because of it, taking advantage of Tiffany's kindness and even asking her for money. The revelation left everyone in stunned silence, and the tone of the meeting shifted dramatically as everyone processed the gravity of Lori's findings. I was deeply immersed in my university research, so when I did make it home, we spent time together sharing meals and going on trips. To the outside world, we appeared like any other married couple. Say something, Tiffany, Peter pleaded, his voice tinged with desperation. You don't need to defend yourself, his father quickly reassured him. We'll handle this, it's not your fault. That's right, Peter's mother added. These documents, from who knows where, are surely fabricated. Our Peter would never engage in such acts. He's a kind, outstanding son, kind to his parents. Maybe, Aunt Lori interjected sharply, but it seems his kindness doesn't extend beyond that. Beneath her calm demeanor, Aunt Lori was resolute. She pulled out a photograph from the stack of documents. I was at a hotel for a business meeting recently and saw William there with another woman, looking quite cozy. I had the detective look into William as well, and the results were just as I suspected. Do you understand now? Peter's mother's face went pale as she grabbed the documents and examined them closely. What is this, William? How long has this been going on? It's all lies, isn't it? Kayla, stop looking, William said, trying to snatch the documents from her. But it was too late. Kayla, visibly distraught, confronted William. You've been cheating on me. The car you wanted so badly was for her, wasn't it? No matter how much William tried to calm her down, Kayla was inconsolable. She stormed out of the house, tears streaming down her face, with William trailing behind her, desperately trying to explain. In the ensuing chaos, Peter blurted out, Hey, wait, what about me? He followed them out, equally confused. Aunt Lori smiled smugly and winked at me, but the rest of us were left in startled silence. She had obviously foreseen the dramatic course of events and the discoveries that had to happen. Aunt Lori told me that Peter's parents finally got divorced after all of the chaos. She gave me the assurance, you won't fall for such a terrible man again. Let's enhance your beauty even further. I'll teach you every detail of personal hygiene and self-care. Aunt Lori came to visit often, even with her hectic schedule, and she would take me shopping and out to eat. I learned a lot from her at this period, getting fresh insight on confidence and self-care. I decided to go to graduate school a year following the divorce. I devoted myself to learning and growing as a person throughout this time of change in my life. I once heard someone yell my name as I was standing at a street crossing. When I turned back, Peter was still standing there. A long time has passed. You've changed a lot, he said, sounding slightly surprised. 
At first, I hardly recognized him. The lady who had formerly been his unremarkable ex-wife had transformed into someone incredibly attractive and self-assured, according to Peter. Peter's life had turned south in the meantime as a result of the drama surrounding his parents' public divorce. Because of the upheaval he had caused, his parents, William and Kayla, had stopped providing financial assistance, and he had dropped out of graduate school. Peter found it difficult to cover his living bills and tuition. His former easygoing lifestyle was a faraway recollection. His old splendor had disappeared practically quickly, and the women who had formerly expressed interest in him had moved on. Just as Peter was going to recommend catching up, a man came over. Regret the wait. Are you pals with Tiffany? He inquired. It was Kevin, the guy I'd only recently begun dating. The moment Kevin arrived, it highlighted the new chapter in my life that Peter was no longer a part of. A group of women standing nearby were envious of Kevin. Whoa, what a cute guy. Are they models? They remarked. Kevin nodded to him, seeing my fleeting conversation with Peter. I know him from back in the day. We're done chatting. It's okay. Kevin took my hand and said, let's go. Without another thinking, Kevin led me away with such confidence that Peter was left speechless. I headed toward the crossing with Kevin. I maintained a straight line of sight, my attention on the road ahead, and the future that lay ahead. As we drove away, I didn't even turn around once.